<laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Blue, I just checked out. You have a uh, you have an IMDb page now. Have you seen that? Oh gosh, I <laughs> I haven't I haven't yet, but I'm now gonna check it. Yeah, I mean it's got the only the the one show because it's yeah. Star Trek Discovery, right? <laughs> um, I'm so glad you got a chance to talk to my friend Nick over at Glad, and he addressed one of the issues that I'm gonna be very careful about how I write about it. But when I got the screeners for the first four episodes, and everybody started calling Adira she or her. I was like, oh, they screwed up. They're gonna have to fix this. They're gonna have to edit this. This is wrong. How can they call her that, them that? So, <laughs> so tell me first of all um, about this idea that um, you and Adira have something in common about coming out. Yeah, I, so I have had, <laughs> I've had a difficult uh, experience my whole life um, with gender. Um, and when I got this part, I was still sort of questioning. Um, I knew I wasn't cisgender, uh, but I didn't, I wasn't really out to anyone. Um, and so when I got this job, I kind of had to do that. And I had to come out sort of to myself and to my friends and to my parents. Um, but I also care as much as I was excited to get a non-binary role. And, and my first emotion was just pure joy at getting to play something that would allow me to explore myself further. Right after that came all of the um, imposter syndrome of, you know, it shouldn't be me, it should be somebody else who's been out longer, who, who knows themselves better. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I care a lot about uh, trans representation in the media. So I wanted Adira's journey to um, mirror mine. I didn't want to do anything that I hadn't already done. So I, when we started, I was still using uh, she, they pronouns. And I didn't want Adira to use they, them pronouns until I was out. So I waited until I was super comfortable and, um, you know, told everyone, <laughs> told my friends uh, and my family, and then um, and then said that I could that I could do the same with with Adira. Um, so it was very challenging and difficult and stressful, <laughs> and not uh, not the way that I expected to <laughs> come out. Um, but I think that it was special um, and very unique. And I had a lot of really good people around me and you know, Anthony and Wilson and Nick and Ian, like the, I had the perfect people surrounding me and supporting me um, to help me do that. I am not um, best friends, but I am friends with both Wilson and Anthony. Um, we follow each other on Twitter and we've uh, met each other a couple of events. And we have, um, we, my BFF is a trans woman down in Orlando and uh, Maya and I have been badgering Anthony and Wilson about when are they going to finally have a recurring character who represents us. You know, we're both transgender. And I know that you're non-binary and we have another actor who we can talk about another time, but it's just so great to have the non-binary community. Does it occur to you what a big deal it is for LGBT fans to see themselves represented on the franchise that we've all known and loved? I, I, I definitely, I definitely do. I definitely feel it. Cause if I had, if I had been able to see a character like this character or like Ian's character when I was eight or nine years old, I think my life would have turned out a lot differently. Um, and I'm hoping that these characters can do the same thing for other young kids. Um, especially cause you know, we're just now finally getting young non-binary characters on television. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know the term until I was 21. Mm -hmm. How old are you now? I just turned 23. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, and I, and I found out what, what it meant from seeing a non-binary actor on TV. It was, it was, uh, Lachlan Watson, uh, on the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I saw them and before I knew how they identified, I saw them and I was like, there's something there. 
and I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I feel a connection to it, right? Yeah, exactly that. And I wish I'd had it as a kid, but I, you know, that's in the past and all I can hope for now. Hey, hey I, I didn't come out until I was 49 and I'm 56 now, seven years. And you find sometimes that you're always coming out because yes. there are new people, new experiences. Uh, tell me what the coming out experience has been like for you. All positive, some negatives? What do you think, a mix? I think it's been a mix. I think um, I think it was really stressful to start out with because of, I think I think the, this show and this character and this whole experience has has made it a super positive experience that also had negatives. There were, you know, it was, it was really stressful at the beginning. And there was, I put a lot of pressure on myself because, but just from imposter syndrome, just from feeling like, you know, maybe I wasn't the right person for the part and they should have cast somebody else who, you know, has been out for years and years and, and is super confident in themselves. Um, but I, it's taken me time and it's still taking me time to understand that there are also people in the world who are like me <laughs> um, and, you know, who, are or have been questioning for a long time or you know do maybe sometimes get imposter syndrome themselves um or struggle with anxiety and depression that can also you know make things a lot harder um so you know there's i am representing those people as well there you know not every single character who is who is trans in the media needs to be super confident and wow. self-assured that doesn't need to be a thing you know it's allowed, they're allowed to be different kinds of people. Um, and also it, it probably feeds your character a little bit too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I'm definitely growing alongside Adira, like, um, which is really fun and, and has been really interesting to see. Are you as inquisitive and as trusting as I've seen Adira be in episodes three and four? Because I was just amazed at, I mean, a little suspicious at first, but you, you, the character gets over that real fast because they had a mission, they had an ambition. And I don't want to give any spoilers, but it was important that Adira made that transition to trust. Yeah, it's, it's, I think I, I think I would be the same. I think, because Adira at that point has, you know, while they're still on earth, has nothing. They've lost everything. And, and this sort of, tiny, tiny voice in their head is the only hope that they have left. So at that point, what else are you gonna do? Um, yeah. It was, very, it was very personal for me because after I came out, I actually, um, I was in the media spotlight. I was the first transgender journalist in network TV news and all of the attention and people, reporters hiding in bushes outside my house, it, um, it blew a circuit breaker and I, actually developed something like what Adira did. I had amnesia. I didn't remember transitioning. And it took a lot of work and commitment. And I was able finally to come out again <laughs> and come out to myself. And I saw a lot of parallels between myself and your character. I'd like to ask, um, have people made the comparison to you about Nichelle Nichols and her Lieutenant Ahura character in the original series? No, no. Nichelle Nichols was um, a, is a black woman who played a communications officer on the original Starship Enterprise. And she was about to quit. She didn't feel like this series was really for her. Dr. Martin Luther King told her, you stay on that show because you're showing all those little black girls that they can be treated equally, that they can be part of this amazing adventure. And she stayed with the show. And I get goosebumps just thinking about that because there is an astronaut, uh, her name is Jameson, and she became an astronaut watching Lieutenant Ahura on Star Trek. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you oh. might be having that same effect with non-binary children and gender non-conforming and trans kids, kids who don't necessarily fit the, the binary. That's amazing. I, I, wow, I didn't know that. That is so incredible. And have, you, have you watched any of the old Star Treks, even the next generation or any of those? Yeah, I've watched um, certain episodes of things, but uh, I've, I've been bouncing around and, and the whole past year, I've kind of still been bouncing around because there's so, it's such a huge <laughs> universe. You, you could spend weeks, yes. Um, yeah. What do you do when you're not shooting? And I know apparently season four has been greenlighted. You're going back in November, right? Next month? 
Yes. Yeah. I'm in Toronto right now, actually. Are you? Oh, that's awesome. Tell me, tell me this. What do you do when you're not filming? What's your life like, Blue? Um, I, I am also similar to Adira in that I'm very introverted. <laughs> I am very introverted. I like being alone. I like having time to myself to sort of recharge. Um, I love watching movies. I love video games. I love D and D. Um, I'm a big nerd. Uh, <laughs> I, um, Welcome yeah, I, I either like, I've, I've been playing D and D with my friends over zoom. Um, I also love photography, but there's not many people I can photograph right now. Um, I hope you take some pictures on the set because those will be memories you'll last that'll last forever. I, I did actually last year and I'm, I, I want to get approved to be able to share them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I'm, I'm, I, I'm a really big homebody. I really like feeling cozy and comfortable and as well. I also, I've, I've had anxiety and depression for most of my life. So having time alone is a big thing for me to be able to stay level-headed and, and calm and comfortable. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that because there is a great stigma around mental illness. And I think right now the entire country is feeling um, a little bit of stress, you know, as we approach this crucial date. Let me ask you two more questions. The name Blue is not your typical name. Do you have a story behind how that name came about? Was it your given name? Um, uh, no, it wasn't my given name. Um, I, uh, I did choose the name. I was trying to, um, I actually changed my name last year, um, well, before, sort of a little bit before I came out, um, I, was, I was stuck between a few and I had a long conversation with my mom asking her about when I was a kid. Um, Cause I, I also have a lot of memory loss from when I was a kid. Um, Cause I was really sure of myself and my identity when I was young, um, but it, I got pushed out of it by people around me when I got to a certain age. Um, but you say bullies? are they bullies? That, that I don't know if it was bullies or just maybe some of it was bullying. Some of it was, um, just social norms and people not really understanding what I was or what was happening to me, <laughs> Get it. Get it. um, it. and pushing me to not be like that. Uh, but I've been trying to get more information about, you know, and, and hear stories about that time in my life. Cause I remember being so confident and happy. And my mom told me that for a while, when I was around seven or eight years old, um, which is around the age where I was very confident in my gender. Uh, I, I mean, I looked like a little boy. Um, people thought I was a little boy. Uh, she said that I only wore the color blue and I refused to wear anything else for like two years. Um, and blue was already one of my options and choices for names. So I was like, okay, that's it. I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I know it's super not normal, but I'm gonna stick with it. No, it's great. Actually, there's a girl I've reported on who's trans, who chose the name Blue as well. Um, she uses the E and um, she uh, made news because uh, she won a fight against the uh, US uh, military who wouldn't let her use the girl's bathroom. Uh, she's a, you know, a military brat and, uh, oh, wow. and they made her like walk all across the, school campus to go to uh, a nurse's office to go to the bathroom instead of using the girls room oh, and uh, now she's on hormones happy everything's great and you're the second blue I've got the interview so I'm very very happy about that <laughs> so let me just I have to wrap this up in the next uh, five minutes I got five minutes left and I wanted to ask you two more questions mm -hmm. one is that where do you see yourself now that you've got this acting slate you've, you're on IMDB and you're committed to doing Star Trek Discovery season four but what do you see in the future? Do you want to continue acting? Is there some other career goal you might have? I, I really love acting. I grew up in theater and I've loved it for a really long time. I, in the future, would love to have a career in independent films. Um, I like the community of it. I like the fact that, you know, it can be a really small group of people um, but really tighten it and you know the actors have artistic input uh, and it's sort of a sort of a shared artistic experience with everyone who's working on the film. Um, I, I love that. Uh, so I, I, I would love to be able to do like 
multiple different independent films and maybe some that my friends might make in the future. Um, but yeah, I think that those little tight knit communities sometimes create some of the best films and most like just wonderful pieces of art. Um, and they start out really small and I really want to be a part of those and also be able to be a part of the creating of it and the storyline and the characters. Um, uh, yeah, I'd love to do that. How about Anthony's path, um, stage path? Would you do improv or would you do a play or a musical or something? Absolutely. Yeah, I would, I would love to get back on stage at some point. I, I, I mean, I went to school for theater primarily and I, I love it. And yeah, I, I would really love to, to be able to do um, theater again, whether that's here or, or London or LA or New York or wherever. Um, that'd be great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, you're talking to a fellow actor, by the way. I did um, TV commercials and, and little like movies and TV shows. Um, and radio uh, from age five until 17. So- Five, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm very far removed. That was decades ago. And I, I don't think, like I've done some modeling in the last 10 years, but I don't think I would, um, I don't think I wanna go back to acting. I, I told my kids, none of them can date an actor because they're always pretending. <laughs> <laughs> my last question is, my last question is, I always ask this question at the end, is there anything I didn't ask that you wanted to make sure people know about you, about your character, and about what's coming up on Star Trek Discovery? Um, oh gosh, I don't, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> spoilers. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't think there's anything else. I just also wanted to say thank you for wanting to do this with me, and it's, it's an honor and a pleasure talking with you, and, and thank you. really enjoy it. I enjoyed talking with you too. And this will be on Forbes.com. Uh, and probably, unless Jennifer and the team uh, wanted to hold it beyond Thursday, it'll be on Thursday morning uh, on Forbes.com. I've had a, such a great time talking to you. I look forward to more adventures with you. And hopefully, we'll talk again. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. Live long. <laughs>